I have four different stills sitting here, and they all have one thing in common. They've all got a thermometer at the top. That must mean it's important, right? And that begs the question, what is the absolute best temperature that you can run these stills at? How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and today we are talking about the temperature that you run a still at. Now, this is, it, it's kind of a little bit of a gotcha, a, a, a trap, a fish hook for the new distiller in that, I don't know, it's just, it's just a weird question. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk quickly through uh, a little bit of the theory that applies to this so that you have a better understanding, a better knowledge of what's actually happening and what we're actually doing so you can uh, react to whatever situation that comes up. Rather than me just giving you a run it at this temperature, uh, sort of answer, which isn't going to apply to 98% of people out there. It's just a weird way of looking at it, in my opinion. Then, once we have that knowledge, we're going to talk about why this is actually kind of a one of those questions that the, the question itself just makes no sense. And then, at the very end, we'll talk about why everything I've said is actually kind of wrong. And it is a good question to ask in some situations. I have a mysterious liquid solution in a pot here boiling away. Uh, we can tell it's boiling because we're getting big bubbles breaking through the surface relatively rapidly, so it's a vigorous boil. Uh, and if we take the temperature of this solution, we find out that it is uh, not quite 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, you will excuse the fact that my thermometer may be slightly inaccurate and or the fact that the ambient pressure here is not, you know, sea level. I don't think we need to, to make you guess, this is in fact water. So we have a pot of water boiling here at 100 degrees Celsius, give or take for various factors, uh, or 212 Fahrenheit, and we're gonna boil some spaghetti. You could ask the question, what temperature should I boil the spaghetti at? Which kind of makes no sense, right? We intuitively know that. We could ask, would you cook it at a boil or a simmer, however. So let's uh, turn this down till we get just a simmer. Uh, and a simmer, for those of you that don't know, especially, well, in, in cooking terms, is kind of uh, defined as little tiny bubbles coming off the bottom of the pot, but not breaking the surface of the pot. So just a little bit rising up uh, and not actively turning the, the liquid over. So let's take the temperature here again as well. We don't see a giant change there, do we? There is a small change, I'll give you that but not a giant change. That's interesting information. Let's set that aside and uh, hold on to that for just a second. Uh, what else could we do to mess with the way that this is gonna cook an ingredient? Uh, well, we could add something else into the mix, right? We could change the chemical solution, which is probably going to change the boiling temperature of the solution. So salt and sugar are probably the most common things that you'll find uh, being added to water in a cooking or a household situation to change the temperature of the liquid when it boils. So we could add some sugar in here and see how that changes the temperature, the boiling temperature that the solution will reach. Spoiler alert, it's gonna increase the boiling temperature whether we add sugar or salt. Uh, but we are a distilling channel, right? Not a cooking channel. So instead of adding sugar in, let's add a different chemical in. Alcohol. <laughs> I don't think that was a surprise to anyone. This is a, a big old pot of um, four shots that I collect for using in all sorts of different things. Uh, now I've had this turned off for a little bit to lower the temperature, temperature down a wee bit, uh, just so nothing drastic happens. Uh, but let's just put a, I'm, I'm not gonna measure this and do it exactly, but let's just put a, um, I'm hoping I hit around about 10% ABV in there. Let's find out though. Let's bring this back up to a boil uh, and just so you know guys, obviously if you're boiling alcohol in an open environment like this, just be careful with it. It's gonna be flammable, so on and so forth. Anywho, uh, let's bring this back up to a boil and see what happens. So the boiling temperature of this has dropped. Now if we sit here uh, and let this boil for a little while, what's happening? Well, the, uh, the, the liquid's boiling and there's vapor coming off the top and the things that are more volatile in the liquid are more likely to boil off first. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later on. So that means that right now there's more alcohol 
coming out in the vapour than there is water coming out in the vapour. Which means what? The percentage of water in the liquid down here is dropping. Which means slowly the temperature that this boils at is going to go up. Let's lock that away in the old noggin as well. And we can show the inverse of that, or lower the temperature, by adding more of this in. And hey presto, uh, the temperature has dropped again. Now it is well ventilated in here, I made sure of that beforehand, but... Eh, let's get that turned off, because I don't want to breathe too much of that vapour. <laughs> let's jump back up there and have a talk about what we've found out here, shall we? All right, so what have we learned so far? We've learned that uh, a liquid is going to boil at the temperature it boils at. And there's really F all that you can do in terms of influencing that other than to change the chemical makeup of the liquid. Or of course you could, you know, change the pressure that it's in. That's sort of outside the scope of this video for what we're talking about. Just a little note though to say that if you are at a higher altitude, obviously, you know, I I'm sure you're used to this water's going to boil at a lower temperature, and so on and so forth. It's time for me to jump in here real quick and say, have you checked out this really cool shirt? Well, uh, guess what? This is a collaboration with Into the AM, and it's the old version now. We have a newfangled, in my opinion, even cooler V2 collaboration shirt. How cool is this? A bunch of really cool uh, Easter eggs and little things in there for chases of the craft. Uh, it's available now, and even better, it is on sale now. If you use the special link in the description down below, you'll get 10% off at checkout. It'll just pop up, you'll see it. There'll be a little CDC tag there with 10% off. But it stacks with the current sale they have on at the moment. I think uh, it is 25% off. Uh, so if you missed the sale I told you guys about a little while ago, or you just got the new shirt and you've decided maybe you want one of these shirts as well, or vice versa, now's the time to do it. Awesome shirts from an awesome company. I love working with them. That's why I've been working with them so much for so long. I'm gonna keep doing so because I think they just make really cool stuff. If you do too, great time to go grab one. <laughs> All right, let's get back over there and get stuck back in. Anyway, <laughs> back to what we were saying. You can't change the, the temperature the, the, that the liquid boils at. And because of the very fact that distillation works, we can boil something and, and uh, extract the alcohol more than the water. It means that the chemical composition of the liquid that we're boiling is constantly changing and constantly dropping. This means that things are kind of complex, right? So if you make a wash that is 14% ABV, it's going to boil at a slightly lower temperature than a wash that is 12%. ABV. There's more alcohol in it, it's going to boil at a lower temperature. But at a certain point, the 14% ABV wash is going to have given off enough alcohol uh, that the wash that's left in the pot is actually 12% ABV, in which point it will boil at the same temperature as the, the other wash we mentioned, right? Assuming that everything else is relevant. Uh, what happens if we uh, didn't ferment out completely dry? There's a little bit of sugar left in there. Well, that kind of messes things up, doesn't it? Because sugar is going to push the boiling temperature of the wash back up again. And this is the exact reason that I was saying earlier on in the video that the, the question of what temperature to run the still at is kind of, it, it, it's a question that doesn't make sense because we can't directly control it. Ah, I hear you say. So far in this video, we've talked entirely about the temperature of the liquid down here. You want to talk about the temperature of the vapour up here. So it turns out that if you're using a simple pot still, uh, whatever the percentage of alcohol that is in the, the liquid, the solution that we're boiling down here in the pot, uh, there's pretty much a specific ABV that's going to come out in terms of the vapour. So that means for any given ABV in the pot, let's pick 12% uh, again there is going to be a given uh, vapour percentage ABV that comes off when you boil that solution. If you increase the ABV in the pot down here, you're going to increase the vapour percentage, or the ABV in the vapour, coming off the top. But as we take uh, more alcohol off the top, the percentage down here drops, which means the percentage in the vapour 
is gonna drop as well. And you guys have all experienced this, right? You might start out at 85% and it quite quickly drops down to, I don't know, like 79%. And then slowly over the run, it'll keep dropping and dropping and dropping the percentage coming off the spout. That's exactly what's happening here. So let's talk about another little misconception that pops up a lot. Uh, and that is, if we know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and ethanol boils at 79 degrees Celsius, uh, then can't we just hold the temperature at like 81 degrees and get rid of all the ethanol first before we go into anything else? And this is actually something that kind of intuitively makes sense when you first start learning about this, right? So it's not a silly question to ask. The answer is no, it doesn't work like that. And here's a little thought experiment that'll, that'll help you understand why. If that was true, when we started a pot still, we would get nothing but methanol at the beginning and then acetone and through all the other things in the heads and then we get to ethanol. Uh, and when we hit the ethanol, we would be getting 95% or actually according to this um, idea or myth or whatever you want to call it, 100% ethanol, right? All the way up until we hit water and then we get 100% water. We know that's not the way it happens. It's just not how it works. And it's because those chemicals in solution interact with each other uh, and it is not a game of absolutes. It's not that one comes off first, the next comes off next. It is a game of kind of percentage chance. <laughs> the more alcohol that is in here, the more likely alcohol is to come off. But it's not the only thing that's gonna come off. We're going to get water, methanol, acetone, all of these other things sort of mixed in with it. So at the beginning of the run, you're more likely to get the acetone coming off at the beginning of a run than you are at the end of the run. But there's probably gonna be a tiny little bit of it about halfway through still. And the same with the ethanol, right? Like when you get all the way down near to the very end of the run, there's still, still some ethanol coming off when there's almost like down to half a percent ABV in here. There's still some ethanol coming off. It's just that the percentage dripping off the end is like, I don't know, 6% ABV or something like that. All right, uh, let's recap, shall we? Changing the amount of energy that we put into the boiler or the pot doesn't change the temperature that the liquid boils at. The liquid is going to boil at the temperature that it wants to boil at based on its chemical makeup. And the specific chemical makeup and specific boiling point of that liquid gives us a specific ABV, alcohol by volume or alcohol, alcohol by weight, if you want to use that, uh, in, the in, the, in, in the vapor as well. Uh, so all of this would kind of suggest that temperature to us is useless. And that's kind of true. It's also kind of not true. We'll get back to that in a second. <laughs> so if we don't care about the temperature up here in, in the vapor path, um, what do we care about? Uh, I would encourage you to stop thinking about temperature and instead think about a boil versus a simmer or the, 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 the speed of the amount of vapor we're taking off. So the more energy we put into the bottom of the pot, the boiling point doesn't change, but the amount of vapor coming out the top does change. That's what we care about. Why? Why do we care about that? Let's use this still head uh, from Clawhammer Supply to kind of illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. Oh, by the way, they've got an upgraded version uh, of these stills. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you're interested to check them out. Uh, but anyway, so we know that changing the amount of energy that we're putting into the pot down below doesn't really change the vapor that's coming off. It just changes how much is coming off, right? What it does change is how that vapor interacts with everything that happens uh, all the way through down to here. So if we put just a little bit of vapor in here, way down at a simmer, it's, it's barely boiling, but there is vapor coming off, of course. Uh, there's all of this area here that is acting as a, 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 a giant heat sink. It, it's sucking energy out of the vapor and it's recondensing it. It's all just gonna fall back down. So we're not even gonna get anything coming over the top. So up here, um, the temperature is gonna read ambient temperature, right? If we put a little bit more in, we will start to uh, push vapor through, but the, all of this area is cooling vapor and only a little bit is getting through up here. So this thermometer is gonna start pushing up towards the temperatures that we would expect, uh, indicative of you know, the, the ABV that's coming off the spout here. 
Now because of that, because there's a bunch of vapour going up and only a little bit coming out, we've got some interesting stuff happening inside the still. There's uh, vapour being condensed back into a liquid and making its way back down, which interacts with vapour that's coming up. Reflux. And in this case, we would call it passive reflux because we're not actively cooling it. This is just a pot still. It's exactly the same in terms of, you know, how we're running the still uh, as something like this, like a classic domed pot still sort of shape. This one is from Still Spirits. There's links down there. Uh, if you're in New Zealand, you can buy these directly from us. Uh, if you're overseas, there'll be links that, you know, take care of you down there as well. All right, so we've got passive reflux happening in here. Uh, reflux, if you don't know, essentially means that uh, the liquid going back down is going to strip the heavier components out of the vapour going up, and the vapour going up is going to strip the lighter components out of the liquid going down. All of that to say, it raises the ABV. <laughs> but, do you remember before how we talked about how there is a specific temperature allocated to a specific ABV in vapour? That temperature up here is now going to decrease because the alcohol vapor is at a higher ABV. So that's why when you change the input on the pot, you can actually get a little bit of a difference in terms of temperature up here. The problem is all of those variables that happened before. I can't give you an exact temperature to hit because every time you try to hit it, it's going to be completely unavailable to you. It's, it's not going to be there. It's a value that doesn't make sense for the system that you're looking at at the moment. Or if it does make sense right now, in five minutes time when the chemical composition down in the pot changes, it won't make sense anymore. And this is the reason why I'm going to talk about why temperature at the top does matter in some situations. We'll get back to that in a second. So right now what I would love for you to think about and focus on is the offtake speed. The speed of the product coming off the spout here or here. Or, I happen to have an example running, down there. <laughs> this is the Air Still by Still Spirits. It has no temperature control and it has no thermometer. But it still works. <laughs> if you have ever used one of these things, you'll know uh, that at the beginning of a run, it is a little bit faster than it is if it is at the end of the run. To the point where, if you're trying to use this thing for a stripping run, it doesn't really go down as low as you'd like it to. It slows way down. So it illustrates everything we've been talking about so far. But why am I showing you this, <laughs> this thing? Uh, because I want to talk about off-take speed, and this demonstrates it really nicely. There's really two speeds that matter, and the first is the speed for a stripping run. I'd suggest to you that you run it flat out, as fast as you can put power into the, the still, put as much in as you can, within reason, like don't go putting a four kilowatt element into an air still. <laughs> but uh, your limiting factor here is your condenser. How much vapor can your condenser knock down? So if we tried to put any more energy into this pot at all, this, this condenser would struggle and you'd start getting vapor out the end. That's an indication that you need to turn the power down a little bit. So when you're running in a stripping run, your objective is to get through the run relatively quickly, save your time, you're just there to cut down on volume, basically. So you can run as much power as you want, your limiting factor is how strong your condenser is. When, however, you're doing a spirit run, like we are here, uh, I would say that the, the offtake speed scales pretty much linearly with the size of the still itself. So with a little still, like the air still, uh, or a little mini pot still, this is probably about the perfect offtake speed. Drop, 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 drop. When you sort of step up to the next size, so something like a, uh, a T500 pot with a uh, Alembic dome on top, uh, the milk can sort of boilers, which are in the 15 to 25 liter range, like the one from uh, Clawhammer Supply, I'd suggest you're probably looking at drip, drip, spurt. Drip, drip, spurt is about the speed you want. And if you go up again to a 50 litre still, so my, my keg still or the Dr. Grata still that I've got sitting over there or the Genio sitting here, uh, you're looking at a steady stream about the width of a pencil lead. That's about ideal. So all of this to say, when you're thinking about what level or what amount of energy to put into your still, forget about temperature. It's completely and utterly irrelevant. It'll change all the time. 
It's not gonna help a beginner distiller. Instead, focus on the offtake speed. There is a slight caveat here, uh, and that is that the only real thing that the offtake speed is affecting is how much passive reflux we're getting within the still. And the still design is going to change that a lot. So a design like this versus uh, a design like this are gonna be very, very different. If you've got vapor slowly dripping down the side of this still, that's a pretty significant amount of um, passive reflux that can happen as opposed to a design like this. And honestly, guys, the difference isn't going to be that great. It's really not. So I'm spitballing here, I'm guessing. I haven't measured it, but it with a still this shape, like maybe, maybe 5% ABV difference in terms of the speed that you run it at. With something like this, maybe 3% would be my guess. It's not that big a difference. So if cleaning your spirit up that much is that important to you, you probably need to think about either putting a higher ABV into the pot, which is gonna change it way more drastically, or change the still design. Start using a plate, start using reflux, something like that. Those ideas are kind of sitting outside the realm of this video, but at least now you've got a, uh, a set of keywords that you can go and start researching if you're a new distiller. We need to talk about cuts too, right? Back to this idea at the beginning of the video where we talked about how uh, you know, if you hold the temperature at 80 degrees Celsius, then uh, all of the methanol is gonna come off first. We've kind of talked about, and I hope you understand why that is just not a thing. It's not how it works. Uh, and I hope that that idea extrapolates to all of the cuts for you as well. So if it doesn't work with just methanol or just acetone or just ethanol, how are you going to cut based on the temperature? Think of it this way. If you put low wines into a pot still, and they're at an ABV of about 20%, you're gonna get a much, much, much lower ABV coming out than if you put 40% into the pot, right? Or heaven forbid, <laughs> if you went above the magical 40% uh, percent safety limit and put 70% into the pot, you're gonna get a much, much higher ABV coming off the spout, which means the temperature up here is gonna be much, much higher as well. Does that mean that all of that booze down to the point where it's the same ABV is bad and it's called heads? Of course not. Pretty much the same thing's happening in either case. There's just there's less water in it. Uh, so taking cuts based on temperature when you're learning is just a terrible idea. Don't do it. Instead use taste, smell, touch, uh, all of the other things that you can do to assess the actual spirit coming out. Uh, now, we need to do a couple more things. We need to talk about how this all works for a reflux still and we need to talk about how it all works if you're an experienced distiller making the same cuts on the same product over and over again. But first, I need to say a huge thank you to, oh, this is hard with a stool, and there's an air still in my way. Uh, but thank you, Patreons. Thank you so much for being the people that support me day in, day out. I thoroughly, thoroughly freaking appreciate it. In case you don't know, Patreon is a website where you can sign up to directly support uh, us, what we're doing here, uh, Chase Craft, myself, my wife, so on and so forth. Uh, Everything we make here on YouTube is 100% free and the plan is to always keep doing that. That is our bread and butter, that's what we do all the time. Uh, but if the content that we make here you find valuable and helpful uh, and you think that we've earned some support, uh, then you can jump on over to Patreon uh, and that is the best place to do it at the moment. We're also trying to uh, figure out ways to make that an even more rewarding experience for you guys to be a part of. Uh, Aaron's coming in to help out with that. Anyway, uh, let's move on to eh, eh. <laughs> uh, Let's move on to those two little exceptions I was talking about earlier on. And I've got another prop here to uh, to show you. I'm going to need to move this over, take this off, and put this on. Da da. <laughs> so this is the Air Still Pro by Still Spirits. It's brand new, this is the thing that I had to blur out on the videos uh, a little while ago. I've had it in the shed and been having a little bit of a look-see at it for the last wee while. But the cat's out of the bag and here it is. This is gonna be popping up in more videos to come soon. Uh, I wanna put it through its paces, see what it's good at, what it's potentially not good at, and who it's for. Like, wh why does this thing exist and why should you care about it? But the reason I'm putting it in this video is because this bad boy does reflux. There is a reflux column in there. 
Pretty cool, huh? Why do we want to talk about reflux? Because, well, reflux messes with everything we've talked about a little bit. The reason it's different is because you can think of reflux distillation as a bunch of little mini distillations together. And you have control over how many times those mini distillations happen. So do you remember before how I said um, passive reflux is when things cool here and slowly dribble down the side of the arm and they interact with the vapor going up uh, and the liquid coming down. Uh, the more volatile, the higher ABV stuff uh, gets basically stripped out of the liquid and pushed up and the lower like water, the lower ABV molecules, the lighter molecules get pulled down in the water. We're doing exactly the same thing but we pack the column full of um, a packing material to force more interaction. If we change the reflux ratio, so that's how much of the uh, vapor is being condensed and sent back down the column to be, you know, redistilled again and again and again. So any one little molecule could be doing this 10 times before it finally makes it over the spout uh, and into our collection jar. If we change that ratio, we change the potential ABV coming off the spout, which means we change the temperature up here. So when running a reflux still, we can actually actively influence the temperature at the top of a column here or here before it comes over into our collections jar. I just wanted to point that out because it kind of goes against what we were talking about at the beginning of this video, right? But in my opinion, uh, reducing the amount of energy that goes into the pot down here or you know un under here is not really the way that you want to bring the temperature at the head uh, lower or bring the ABV up. Like I said, that's a whole other video in terms of uh, reflux theory. And I can, I can make that video if you guys are interested in it. Let's get into the last point where I think uh, that everything I've said up until now is not wrong. It's just it may not be the right way to do it. And that is when you're a very uh, experienced distiller running on the same equipment, running very similar or the same recipes over and over again. So if you're in a production environment, if you're running a commercial distillery, uh, and you have you know, like three main whiskey recipes that you make, three main mashes that you make, and you make it pretty much the same every time, and you distill them the same every time, you can start to figure out at what temperature certain things happen. And then, Temperature doesn't become the be all and end all, it just becomes another data point to help make sure that you're doing everything consistently each time. Heaven forbid you're trying to make cuts on the still and you've got a dirty great big cold and you can't smell anything or taste anything. As a commercial distiller, hell yes, you're gonna take things like the percentage ABV coming off the spout, the total volume that you've collected of um, heads versus hearts versus tails, you're gonna take the uh, average ABV of heads, hearts, and tails. You're going to damn sure know the temperature at the top of your still and in the pot. And you're gonna start to form an opinion on when to make cuts uh, and how to operate your still based on all of that information. But if you're asking the question, what is the best temperature to run my still at? Or at what temperature should I make a cut from A to B? you know, from heads to tail, uh, from heads to hearts or hearts to tails. If you're asking that question, I think maybe you're not quite there yet. Because if you were there, you would know where you make a cut on that recipe because that is the flavor profile you want. Then the flavor profile becomes the thing that you're actively trying to chase and all of the other data, your senses included, smell, taste, touch, sight, become a uh, hints at what you need to do to hit that specific target every time. If on the other hand, you're just trying to figure out how to you know, get into this hobby, trying to figure out what to do, I would suggest that what you really need to do is be able to taste it and smell it first. Once you can do that, once you can reliably pick out what you want from a spirit, then you can start looking at all the other data points that'll help you make that decision more reliably more often. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. This has turned into a really long video. It got complex. <laughs> I hope it's helped you out, team. Uh, if it has, please, 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 guys, it costs you nothing to hit the thumbs up button down below and drop a comment. Uh, let me know if something seems unclear. There's a bunch of other smart people that watch these videos that are probably gonna give you a better answer than I can. So I think that about sums it up. <laughs> Man, uh, if you've watched this far into the video, Good on you. That was a bit of a uh, a bit of a mission to get this far. So, nice work. 
happy distilling, keep on chasing, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.